Tony. Woo. See this log is. Yeah. You have to be right. You have to be right. There's a log. Get him, get him, boys. Anything for him? You in or out? What do you need, man? What do you need? You want me to pull it? You ready? Hold on. What do you want? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. The camera is in the back strap. I'm gonna get out and stick my feet out. Do you want me to pull? No, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through my tunnel. Got it. It's gonna be better than Got you, got you. Okay. I can I can probably push him back if you hold on to that rope. You're fine, we're stable, just hang on. You ready? Step out. I can, huh? Kind of a close call, but it turned out okay in the end. And now I want to walk you through what I was thinking and the dilemma I was in right here at this point on the rock and how perhaps I could have done better myself. And Tony covered in another video a lot of good points, but I figured I'd just give you one more angle on this incident. So I'll start with we got beta from the group running the rapid, which we are not a part of, at the put-in. We decided we wanted to scout it ourselves, which is a practice I normally do. And when I got down here, the first man in our group, right before the other group ran, I was surprised to see a log there in the pour over of the rapid as the beta we got from the group running was that there was a small log over the rapid but was not in play. And that's the one you can see kind of harmlessly over the rapid three or four feet. So again, I was surprised when I looked over the ledge and the whole left side of the rapid is blocked by about an eight inch tree. And that leaves me unsure of what to tell the guys and they actually already have paddlers in the water headed this way. 
So I'm trying to tell anyone who'll listen that I think we should close the rapid with hand signals to close, do not run, unrunnable, and I'm trying to tell them would, but I'm not sure the message is getting through. But in real life, sometimes it's a little murky. I do not know this group. They could be phenomenal class five paddlers that have assessed the risk and feel they can make the right move because there is a right move there. But again, I don't know. They said they scouted it. I don't want to interject doubt in a paddler's mind coming down the river at the wrong time if he already thinks he can make the move. So if I could do something better at this point, I would, I would get on the whistle. I would insist that we close the rapid and make sure everyone knows about the log I'm talking about. The first guy already made it through and by happenstance he went right as I was yelling at him to go right and here comes the second boater and I'm pointing and yelling to go right as hard as I can and he does. Made a small adjustment. I think he was headed there anyway. He later told me he did hear me say go right and that helped him out a little bit. And from the look on the guy's faces and they seemed somewhat concerned, I started realizing no, they did not know about that log. And so now I'm really trying to convey there is a log in this rapid and you have to stay far right. And I'm yelling and hand signaling and I know they got another man in the water, but no way to relay that to the guy coming down because the middle rock safety has now left. They got their own guy on a rock trying to relay signals to the top now as well. You see him over there. Uh, it's starting to become a thing. And before we can actually stop the action or get the message up the hill to the next paddler he's coming down through the chute as well and here he comes in the brap looking pretty good hitting his lines staying on it keeping the paddle in the water making his turn and right about here he starts looking at people and things and he lets off the gas and floats left instead of driving right and there it is worst case scenario vertical pin he's about to be upside down in between the log and the curtain and we're springing into action to get down there to him. He folds over, rotates, and by the grace of God, he comes up, head up, downstream of the log, but still in his kayak. And this just went to best case scenario because he is in reach of this little slack water eddy next to the shore. The first thing I do is to grab that boat and stabilize this situation because this could be much, much worse at the moment. I don't want that boat to move an inch because he's breathing, he's fine, and we need to get our team in place, get things going, and uh, make sure he's not injured, and then come up with a plan to get out. He's catching his breath, looking around. I'm asking him, does he want me to pull it? He's thinking, and you know, sometimes you don't know what they're dealing with underwater in that boat. If I do pull the skirt, that boat is going down and it is going downstream and it's going to do it very quickly. So I'm not pulling the skirt until he knows I'm about to, until he's ready, until Tony's ready. And as much can be in place as possible. Again, right now that boat is stable. It's not going anywhere and he is breathing. And that's really not something I want to give up too soon. Again, until everything's ready because this situation can change dynamically if he's not prepared to get out of that boat or if we can't stop him and the boat from washing downstream. And if you look just behind him over his right shoulder, there looks like some potential city area there where the water's pushing under the tree to the left of the rock. There's a lot more rapid downstream. If we lose him, he's washing as a swimmer with no one to kind of help him out. So again, a pregnant pause here to make sure everything's in place and to to think about it before we do anything. And at this point, he's telling me what he wants to do. He's telling me there's a camera bag between his legs and he's telling me that he wants to come out of his tunnel. And one reason a kayaker would do that is to keep the kayak buoyant while he's trying to escape it. Again, he knows if I pull that skirt or if he pulls the skirt, the boat's going down and it's going down river. I will not be able to hold it most likely. And as he's trying to escape the tunnel, what he's coming to realize is that his legs are wedged in there by this log and it's pushing him into the back band. He's unable to get his knees out and is get his body out of this boat in this position. And uh, one thing I do want to comment on is that Peter here stayed incredibly calm 
and in control and was trying to work a plan here and there was no panic in Peter and he knew what he wanted to do, he knew what he needed to do. And at this point you can tell he's just unable to make that happen. So at this point things changed just a little bit when he realized he can't get his feet out. He really started pushing and thrashing and trying to do some things and that was the point where things changed where okay we tried that now let's do it our way so i told him to hang on he was stable uh look around i say tony i think i can push him out from under this tree if you can hold on to that rope which in turn is holding on to the paddler and so brian moves into position to be able to grab his life jacket or a boat or whatever needs to happen in just a minute as i push this boat down river and out from under the tree at least a little bit so that he can climb out of his tunnel. And again, I wanna reiterate at this point, the last thing I'm trying to do is to jettison him or his boat or any kind of combination thereof back into the current, which would take him downstream into some more potentially dangerous situations. So we have him, we want to get him out of the boat, but we wanna do it in the safest way possible. So. I'm pushing down as hard as I can, whether it looks like it or not. He's pushing back against the log, and Brian is ready to grab. He's holding on to his life jacket, and I get it about here on the cockpit combing, and if it goes much further, it's gone. So I stop. I tell Brian to stop. I'm holding the boat as hard as I can, and I tell him to hang on, step out. Right now, everything's under control. I've got the boat. I don't want anything going. So at this point, he resumes his plan to climb out of his tunnel and does a remarkable job of staying calm and making that happen. His teammates coming up behind him, ready to assist, finally able to join in. And this boat, when as soon as he's out, that boat just rockets back that way. I'm glad it didn't hit anybody. But we have him, we have the boat, we have his paddle, no one's injured, and all's well that ends well. So I'll leave you with one more real time of just the rescue of Peter here and take a look at it for what it is. We're not world renowned swift water experts. We're just kayakers looking out for each other that have had some swift water training and trying to keep each other safe on the river. So if you've never had the training yourself, do yourself and everyone else a favor, get a swift water rescue class, practice the stuff, and be ready because it happens fast. Right. right, right! Oh shoot! Get him, get him, boys! That ain't worth it. You in or out? What do you need, man? What do you Want me to pull it? Yeah. You ready? Hold on. What do you want? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. The camera is in the back, it's trapped. I'm gonna get out and stick my head out. You want me to pull? No, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through my tunnel. Okay. Got you. Here. Got you. Push him back if you hold on to that rope. You're fine, we're stable, just hang on. You ready?
You good? <laughs>